Today is a great day in crypto and for Bitcoin and for the entire industry as the Bitcoin ETF spot ETF has just been approved. Finally, uh, this time around, I've checked multiple sources. This is in fact real and I'll show you guys the exact uh, announcements from multiple uh, channels as well as SEC's official website. Even Gary Gunstler himself has come out and made a statement on this. So right out of the gate this is real this time nothing to worry about anymore we are good so what is next that is the question we're going to get into today uh, is it going to be a sell the news event has this likely already happened and on the other side on the upside has this event been priced in or will the uh bitcoin uptrend continue so we'll look at some data on this as well and historical uh price performance of new asset classes after ETF approval. And I want to give you guys uh, an update on our uh, bet that I've made about one month, one and a half months ago for January 10th, which is today, uh, when the Bitcoin ETF, uh, you know, when throughout our following of the Bitcoin ETF announcements, you know, I made the uh, call that January 10th was going to be 90% chance that this uh, will get approved if it gets approved at all. Um, that was after the um, November 20th-ish uh, deadline passed. So this was the final deadline. And uh, very luckily, actually, I'm surprised how this worked. Um, we got the approval exactly on this day, the last day that it's possible. So uh, I'll give you guys, you know, um, the exact breakdown and how... Um, we're going to take this contest that I have made with our bet where uh, Bitcoin hasn't really hit 50K today. It's pretty close. It has even touched 48, I believe, uh, in this past week. Um, but a bet is a bet. So I will be giving away 0.1 Bitcoin soon. And I'll show you guys, uh, you know, how you can participate. Uh, full disclosure, this is only going to be our for our viewers. Not going to be very, very public. I'm going to do it all live. So for our viewers only. Okay, uh, let's get into it before uh, we get started. Welcome back to the channel. I uh, hope you guys are doing well. My name is Dennis. If you guys are new here, uh, here on the Virtual Bacon channel, I cover market analysis, uh, catalyst events, and um, you know investing strategy to build wealth in crypto. So uh, let's get into the charts first and all the news and uh, if you guys have any questions please leave them down in the comments and chat section and we will do a q a at the end uh so bitcoin currently is sitting at forty five thousand nine hundred, and you can see there has been just very very volatile movements for the past day uh if you guys remember yesterday when uh, there was this fake news where the SEC's account was compromised and it tweeted out a fake approval and subsequently, you know, Gary Gensler came out and said the, the account was compromised, the approval was not real, but he didn't say it was not approved, but this still triggered a lot of price swings. So right out of the gate, I would say that no matter what you do, don't try to bet very heavily on one direction right now, whether that's up or down on Bitcoin, because in my opinion, all we're going to see on Bitcoin right now is going to be a lot of volatility. But I really don't think anyone knows at this point trading this event, how how they're going to make money off of this, no matter which direction you, you think it's going. So that's my first uh, sign of caution I want to give you guys. Now, secondly, uh, for this actual news today, let's break down why this is actually official. So, of course, here are our usual, you know, news sources that we all look at that are semi-official, like CoinDesk, Cointelegraph. They have all reported this. Bitcoin ETF wins SEC approval, bringing easier access to biggest cryptocurrency. Uh, for these financial news, usually the two much more trustworth, uh, trustworthy sources are uh, Reuters. They are usually, I would say, top three. So they have reported on this. US SEC has approved 11 spot Bitcoin ETFs. And most importantly, I would put Bloomberg at top because Bloomberg also runs the Bloomberg terminal. All of their news, you know, uh, breaking news is fact tracked through there. And all of these, um, you know, all of the approval uh, calendar deadlines, et cetera, with all the details of uh, latest filings, those all come from Bloomberg uh, terminal 
which uh, is the most popular financial terminal used by Wall Street, used by uh, TradFi giants. So that is honestly the source of truth. And that is why Bloomberg also posting about this SEC approves Bitcoin spot ETFs in milestone for digital assets. Very legitimate here. Uh, and last but not least, when looking at a piece of news, you just uh, whether it's real or not, you just look at the biggest um, the biggest opposition, right? In this case, it would be SEC Chair Gary Gensler. And Gary himself has even issued a statement on spot Bitcoin ETF approval. He says, while we approved the listing and trading of certain spot Bitcoin ETP shares today, we did not approve or endorse Bitcoin, meaning, oh, we have to say this, we don't really like Bitcoin, uh, at least he says so, but he confirms this, right? And you can cross check this on SEC's website, sec.gov statement on the approval of spot bitcoin exchange traded products he uses etps here to avoid using the name etf but they are referring to the exact same things here okay so that's out of the way we know that the etf approval is real it has happened there's no question about it anymore uh, so if anyone tells you otherwise that is fake news so really good, really good win for the entire industry. Let's just, you know, take a moment to really appreciate this. Uh, I remember my history in crypto, uh, 2017, 2018 cycle, right? That was when the Bitcoin futures ETF got approved. I believe it was uh, January, 2018. And subsequently, you know, it really led to a kind of blow off top period in that uh, in two cycles ago um, when people really thought the institutional adoption for Bitcoin was coming uh, because of that product. However, um, we now know that it, you know, it is a futures product. It doesn't really have real Bitcoin holdings, which means it doesn't contribute to the spot supply of Bitcoin, it doesn't contribute to the supply and demand. And it was merely an instrument for speculation. And people thought the spot ETF was coming right after the futures ETF in 2018. But this was uh, well, now we are in January 2024, so this is six years in the making. Um, we have come a long way. That's, let's just put it that way. So take a moment to be grateful for the industry, and we are clearly moving forward. Now, uh, in terms of current price action, we did make a bet on Bitcoin. I made a bet on Bitcoin uh, for its price. Uh, we did this on December 1st, so 40 days ago. And I said, okay, I bet Bitcoin can hit 50K by January 10th, 2024, or I will give away 0.1 Bitcoin. And uh, the other rule, only other rule is that the video should hit 5,000 likes. And you guys were very generous, you know, giving the video a lot of support, 5,000 likes here. So you see, when we covered this, I cannot be mad, right? Because Bitcoin was at 38K and now it's at 46K. Uh, all in all, has been a really good month. Um, so will Bitcoin make another push today to hit 50? Uh, I think that's that would be quite a stretch. So I think most likely I will be losing this bet, which means I will be giving away 0.1 Bitcoin. Uh, I, I'm going to plan how this goes, but essentially over the next couple of days, either tomorrow or day after, I'm going to do another live stream where uh, for our regular viewers that know about this, that know that I'm doing this giveaway and this contest, they will tune in and on that live stream, you know, I will use uh, the um, kind of live bot so that you can enter into into the contest and we'll do a live draw so that everything is fair. Uh, and then I will reach out to you guys uh, directly. So that's how we're going to do this. Overall, not, not mad at all. You know, I will gladly give away the, this amount for Bitcoin to pump $8,000 in one month. I mean, that's... that's uh, you know, my bags are, are thanking the market for this. Okay, so other than that, uh, will this be a kind of time to sell the news or will this be a, will this even trigger any short-term pump, right? Because throughout the speculation period over the past six months, uh, people have taken both directions very aggressively. Some people are very against it and saying, once the ETF comes out, Bitcoin's gonna dump to, straight to like $30,000. There's the other camp that says, once Bitcoin gets approved, 
you know, it's going to straight up moon to 60,000. Uh, in reality, neither is likely to happen, in my opinion, because both sides are likely priced in. So I'll show you guys why. Um, here we have the chart of Bitcoin's uh, futures data for funding for open interest, which indicates how much uh, leverage is in the market, how much speculation is in the market. And you see throughout this run up that we had uh, this ETF hype, right, since I would say October, right, late October, the funding rate for Bitcoin has been consistently rising, right, and reaching a peak point on early last week, right, January 3rd ish, right here, was when Bitcoin's funding rate hit essentially yearly high, right, way higher than before. What the funding rate means is how much the futures price is leading ahead of the spot price, which means which uh, shows how much upside speculation there is for Bitcoin. So uh, when funding is super high, this is triggered by uh, people heavily long in Bitcoin while the spot price hasn't moved as much. So there's a discrepancy there and that's taken up by this high funding. And subsequently, right, you see that we had a large crash last week. I, I was on vacation, but I even tweeted about this also where Bitcoin took a sharp drop, right, from 46K all the way down, touching even 40K. And you see since then, funding has pretty much been reset, right? It has quite a low amount now, almost at zero, which means the spot price has essentially tr been trading in parallel with uh, futures price. There isn't heavy speculation in either direction. And when you look at the open interest down here, which is that last chart, I'm gonna move myself here, that open interest, the last chart here, this is also getting lower and lower on this run up, right? If we zoom out a bit to a daily chart, you see throughout this ETF run since the beginning, since I would say summer of this year, the open interest has not been rising. So open interest indicates how much total uh, futures position or leverage position is in the market. Uh, and this is only for crypto native exchanges, things like Binance, Bybit, you know, Coinbase, et cetera. It doesn't take into account uh, TradFi exchanges like CME, CBOE, NASDAQ, et cetera. So this shows me that while there has been a lot of speculation for Bitcoin uh, essentially going into uh, the ETF approval, right? People were heavily longing. That long trade and that so-called um, sell the news trade has mostly been done last week on January 3rd, triggered by this pretty much blow off top in the funding funding rate here. However, if you're talking about uh, on the other side, a, a, a long trade now uh, where, you know, you want long Bitcoin, now that uh, Bitcoin ETF is approved, that is also very hard to do because open interest is showing a different picture, right? As Bitcoin price is going up, open interest has been dropping. This means the market share, the volume, the trading volume is actually decreasing, so to speak, in crypto native futures markets uh, throughout this run up, which means the crypto native exchanges like Binance is clearly losing volume uh, versus things like BlackRock, things like, you know, um, CBOE, CME, these traffic exchanges, they are clearly gaining the volume and they are likely continue, continue to do so, which means it's going to be a slow grind from now on, you know, for Bitcoin, for, uh, for the rest of the cycle, if you're still, you know, trading heavily on Binance and speculating on, okay, like, you know, this event, we're going to long this event, we're going to short, etc that's going to work less and less favorably. And instead, uh, the TradFi guys, they they think much more long-term, right? Uh, for example, when Gold first got their ETF approved, yes, it went on a very consistent run-up, but that took many, many years. So I think that's likely going to be the case for Bitcoin going into the future. It's going to be a um, lot less like immediately volatile, but long-term a lot more bullish. So that's why I would say I wouldn't bet on an immediate long trade on Bitcoin as well. So uh, this event, 
that has happened today has clearly been priced in. Uh, another way to look at this is yesterday's roller coaster, right? So when the SEC's uh, uh, Twitter account got uh, got compromised, they tweeted that the ETF was so quote unquote approved, uh, but then Gary Gensler came out and debunked it. And this is when we saw these huge wicks yesterday, right? So first, this one wick here was people speculating, oh, is it gonna happen today? And boom, right? A 5% move within 15 minutes on Bitcoin. This is, keep in mind, a $500 billion market. That's very irregular. And then right here, this was crazy, right? So um, the first 15 minutes was when, uh, even the first five minutes, right, was when SEC tweeted that announcement. Everyone went heavily long, pumping Bitcoin to 5% uh, within five minutes. But then immediately, right, as this was debunked, these guys got, got blown out and the short side came in as well. And in reality, what happened? Nothing really happened, right? And then now, are we going to see more of these? I, I think so. I think this is what we're likely going to see going to the next week as this news really propagates across the world, across the world of you know crypto in all languages um, and people digest this. So more swings are likely going to happen. So my approach to this is just waiting this one week out, maximum two weeks, uh, and not really touching Bitcoin for a trade until then. I still have my all my long-term positions, Bitcoin, Ethereum, altcoins, etc. Those remain unchanged because, well, the long-term effect we all know. Uh, but short-term, I don't think this is the period you should be trading. Uh, so this is how I'm looking at it. Okay. Uh, for the long-term adoption, um, just a little bit of a reminder. I'm sure you guys have all seen this, but this is when uh, gold had uh, its first ETF approved back in 2004. And you see uh, it has gone on a uh, 5x rally essentially over the next um, two decades, right? Over the following 18 years. So slow and steady, but the effect is there. Uh, now, this chart is actually an auto chart, which doesn't really do its justice, right? So uh, I can even I'll give you guys a uh, logarithmic chart, which would be more obvious. So when you look at uh, gold versus um, here, here's the chart of gold. And we go back to, all the way to let's say weekly. Here we go. All the way back to 2004. You see that if you take this as a regular chart, this will show very, very, it will look like a parabolic growth, right? From around October uh, 2004, right here, $400 to $2,000. But when you look at this in a logarithmic standpoint, this actually made the asset class slow down, right? Because when you look at the past, um, historical price action for gold, right? This was, these were really the run-ups. And the subsequent here, sure, there was a run-up, but eventually this became a much more, gold became a, a much more calm asset class. So this is the direction that Bitcoin is clearly heading in. Okay. Uh, where is, what is the other? Thing? Right. So the next immediate... Uh, price action that I am interested in, the next immediate effect that we're already seeing is on Ethereum. So I have always been Ethereum bull. I have, you know, even against like the recent Solana run, um, even on other channels, I have expressed this clearly. I I am bullish on Ethereum. I'm bullish on the Ethereum ecosystem, on all the layer twos, uh, Arbitrum, uh, Optimism, Polygon, ZK Sync, etc. That's all coming. Um, this effect is something that I'm actually paying attention to. And I'll do the deep dive on this in the next few days. But my uh, my my stance on this is that now that Bitcoin's ETF approval is here and everyone sees that, okay, the real effect is the speculation leading up to the ETF launch, right? For the past 
two and a half months, right? Bitcoin has essentially gone from 30K to 48K. So the Ethereum ETF is coming, right? Because we know BlackRock has also filed for the Ethereum ETF. And now we know BlackRock has that power. BlackRock has the power to create an ETF uh, from a completely new asset class, even if the SEC is completely against it in the past. It does separate itself from all other TradFi giants. So the fact that BlackRock has also filed for a Ethereum spot ETF most likely means this will get approved. And the fact that the Bitcoin ETF has already happened, it even increases the chance of the Ethereum ETF happening, right? Because it's also BlackRock. It's the second largest cryptocurrency. It's widely supported, regarded in the same light as Bitcoin as a commodity instead of a security. So all the signs are pointing to Ethereum ETF is also going to happen. So combining the fact that Ethereum ETF is coming, and people now know that the speculation effect is much more, much easier of a trade than actually waiting for the event to happen and then acting. Now people will, will want to get in on Ethereum, right? And ride the Ethereum wave leading up to the to its ETF launch. And not to mention that Ethereum has completely been lagging behind Bitcoin, right? So uh we essentially have this uh, key level here at 2100. Uh, 2, this level is very similar to the $3,000 range uh, back here for Bitcoin, right? So you see how far Bitcoin has already broken above that. When you map these two charts on top of each other uh, here, uh, you see that Essentially, Ethereum compared to Bitcoin, it's just breaking above this kind of bear market support here, right? This is where Ethereum is at. So, leading up to its Bitcoin uh, to its ETF launch, most likely people are going to make this rotation much more quick, much more quick, and price in this event much more quickly. So, this is the effect that we're seeing on Ethereum uh, with its rotation, and uh, also for Ethereum versus Bitcoin. Ratio. So I have been calling for this ratio to make a mean reversion uh, since forever, right? So Ethereum versus Bitcoin ratio still sits at 0 0.05. And I still believe this ratio will likely see a comeback and potentially for Ethereum to outperform Bitcoin by around 50% leading up to its ETF launch and leading up to the rest of this year in the bull run. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, just on Ethereum, but I'm going to dive into Ethereum ecosystem and how I'm positioning myself uh, for the rotation coming from other layer ones. Uh, we're going to do that live stream very soon. Okay, last but not least, uh, do not forget there are still three major catalyst events coming to not only Bitcoin, for the, but for the entire uh, crypto ecosystem and some even for just general markets. So number one is uh, the Bitcoin halving, right? So just, uh, you can, f anyone can find this just by Googling Bitcoin having countdown and we are 11, 111 days away. Uh, the estimate right now is for April 30th for the Bitcoin having event to happen. This is number one. Number two is that uh, the US elections is just starting, right? I believe the first caucus is starting um, sometime next week and they will run the campaigns all over, all over the states and uh, the final showdown is happening in November. So in election years, markets are always stimulated. They want the markets to do well in order for you know all candidates to have a to have a shot at it. And last but not least, uh, rate hikes. Right, remember that. Well, they have already paused rate hikes. Right. So this is CME uh, watch tool for Fed uh, rate probabilities based on each FOMC meeting. And you see the current probabilities are that for the next meetings in, uh, first of all, for the last meeting in December, they have already paused rate hikes. They did not hike rates again. And for the January and March meetings, you see we have a 96% uh, chance for no change, right? And basically 0% chance for hike, right? So this means... Basically, rate hikes are completely over, right? Do not take anyone's, you know, fake news 
on this uh, on this matter anymore. Rate hacks are not happening. Interest rates have topped out. They are not going to increase anymore. And the only question now left is when are they going to start? Uh, when are they going to start cutting interest rates? And you can find this uh, estimate very clearly every time on this tool. So currently we're looking at around uh, June, right? June to July ish. There's about a hundred percent chance for a rate cut, or in other words, quantitative easing. So this means the money printer will be turning back on in probably Q3 of this year. So throughout last year, this this um, estimate has changed. I have seen it as late as kind of uh, October next year, as early as uh, July. So I would I would say most safe estimate would be sometime in July of this year. So Q3 of this year, rate cuts are going to happen. Markets will be stimulated again by the uh, Federal Reserve. Um, uh, money printer is turning back on. And that means not only Bitcoin, not only crypto, but all markets will start doing well. So this is the time to be bullish. No matter how you look at, oh, Bitcoin's current price action, it's up too much. That doesn't matter, right? When you have these three huge events that are all coinciding this year, this will be a bullish year. Now, so many people are saying, oh, yeah, everyone's saying this, like this is not going to happen. No, like that is not a good way to look at this, right? You don't want to take the rhetoric just because everyone agrees. This time around, it is real, right? The events are all there. The data is all there. You can look at past years where um, quantitative easing is happening, Bitcoin halving is happening, and um, the U.S. election is happening. Markets have always done well in when uh, during these three events. So don't overthink it. This will be a bullish year, and this is the time to stay bullish and stay in the market. Right uh, now, immediate short term again, I'm not speculating on Bitcoin right now for the next week or two because there's probably still some volatility, but remaining in a long position for for spot um, is definitely the right play for the rest of this year. OK, uh, that's it. That's everything. Just not much like immediate alpha today because every everything is reaching a boiling point. So I really want to take a more kind of grounded approach for today um, and just say this event is there. This is the clear news and it's over long term. It will be very bullish, but just be careful of over speculation right now. OK, um, before we get into uh, the end. Yeah, so before we get into Q&As, uh, if you guys like this content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, join our Discord with the link in the description or go on virtualbacon.com. So on our Discord, we have our free VIP program where I post my trade alerts, da daily analysis um, for, you know, we even covered this, uh, you know, Bitcoin dump last week, the flash crash. And I told everyone there is nothing to be worried about. That was really the entry point. And this turned out to be a really good move. And we have a ton of people just constantly, you know, trading, posting their charts, discussion group, etc. This is the place to be for the bull market if you're looking for a community. Uh, you can find the link uh, in the description or go to discord.gg slash virtual bacon. And um, uh, that, that's it. And the other place to find me is on Twitter or X. So you can find me on virtual bacon zero X on there. I'm going to be dropping a lot more threads uh, in the new year leading up to our live streams because those will be much easier to do as I'm doing research. So this is where I'll be posting much more short-term alpha right when they drop.